You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Welcome back to the Cricket Podcast, part two of our show. This is the preview of India v England Test Four. Um, we're going to have a little chat about that. We should just mention as well because some people will be um, joining us on YouTube for like the first time right now, and they'll be like, "What the fuck is he talking about?" Part two. Um, this is part two of a two-part show, and you can go and find the other part, which is a recap of the third test somewhere else. Uh, for the people on audio, sorry that I just annoyed you by um, talking about that. Uh, we'll be we will be previewing this, and then we'll move on to the PSL and India v. Uh, sorry, New Zealand v. England women and New Zealand v. Uh, Australia as well um but yeah you know I've talked for long enough Ross preview talk to me yes so England can draw in India which it would be a like a pretty big achievement I think uh, I, was gonna, I was gonna say monumental but maybe the context of the uh of England not hitting over 200 runs in the last five innings it would be pretty monumental um <laughs> I think and they would have taken that position I think they'd take the position they're in now before the series started, I think they'd take being 2-1 down going into the final test match, I think. Um, but the uh, rotation circus could well see a few more clowns come out from behind the curtain. Um, so let's let's have a quick run through um, of what, what we're likely to see. Uh, Crawley, probably done enough to um, ha- uh, retain his space. As a Sibley, I don't think they're going to change that opening partnership. Um, Johnny Pairstow, the, uh, the Frankenstein monster that cannot be killed. Um, <laughs> Well, what, what, what's what's going to happen there? Do we reckon? Is is there going to be a bit of a shakeup? Is the option that you bring Burns back in and drop Crawley to three, bring Dan Lawrence back in, or it, ha, did they treat Johnny Bairstow quite harshly by just dumping him in this game and him, him getting back to back zeros? I think they'll hundred percent play him. Yeah, I uh, I would. If you do play him, I wouldn't play him at three. No. I- I mean, it might. You could argue that they treated him harshly by bringing him back and dumping him, dumping him in. But um, he's not. He's not a number three. He's not. A, well, not a test number three anyway. And we have Zach Crawley, who has been playing there and has been has shown that he can do the job. So I would. I would. Uh, I would have Burns opening with um, with Sibley and, and Crawley at three. And if you want to play Bairstow, then you can uh, bring him in further down the order. For clarity, I, I would one hundred percent agree with what Mac said, and I think they should have done that for the third test as well. Uh, it's just what we make. think. What, what you think England will do? <laughs> yeah, it's what yeah. I think England will do is stick with Pesto because, mm-hmm. like, they'll, they'll, yeah, he's the golden boy, and they'll be just, they'll be trying to just, they have, they have to justify this rotation policy somehow, and 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 the way they justify that is Johnny Pesto miraculously scoring a series levelling century, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, so they they can't deprive themselves of the opportunity for justification. That is so. I lo- love that. I lo- love that. Put put some money on that. Um, so, Ma- so Max, in 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 the in the world of what should happen, does that mean that Ollie Pope drops out of the of the eleven for you? Yeah, I think um, I think given you know the rotation policy and he's come back from a from a nasty dislocated shoulder, not played a huge amount. I I think just take him out the firing line for this last test. He's looked. I he he was all at sea against Ashwin. He really didn't know uh, what his whether his right leg was his left arm or or, or you know. So um, I I think just maybe yeah, just for his sort of uh, his sake, maybe just take him out and um, let him dust himself off and bring him back for some of the tests against New Zealand. So Max is saying the right thing to do. I um, 100% agree with all of that, especially as Pope's not going to the IPL. So if England do this thing where they let the guys at the IPL play the whole of the IPL and miss the, the New Zealand series, or at least the first test, Pope, you'll need him back for that. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think, yeah, let's not destroy England's future. Uh, let's not sacrifice him at the altar of Ravi Ashwin. <laughs> uh, but we will. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to play the role of what we will do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't think that, uh, I, well, I, I, I don't think they'll, they'll find, find the, 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 the drop button. I think their philosophy when it comes to batters is to give them at least one too many goes before they jettison someone um, rather than one too few. Or that's how they'll phrase it. I mean, I, 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 would, I would say 
Uh, they're probably giving them two or three too many in some situations. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but as, you know what I mean. But as I said, this is an opportunity to level a series. I think drawing in India would be a huge achievement for any team right now. And England still have that opportunity. So I think um, yeah, they need to play their best team. Uh, Root's going to play. Stokes will play. Uh, Folks is obviously going to have to play. Um, but that moves us on to the bowling lineup, which um, England got a little bit wrong in the last test match, and uh, that's okay. Um, I kind of touched upon it in the uh, first part of the show, but there is a, there is an opportunity here for England to roll out one of their tried and tested techniques of giving a spinner one mm. one test match at the end of a tour that's not going so well. Um, but this time it's going to be in favourable conditions. It's not being four nil down in Australia. And throwing, there you go, mate. Have a have a go. Graham um, Swan's retired, so good luck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, so in this case, I, I'm not sure how much they trust Don Bess. I mean, Jack, you kind of um, hypothesised that he may have well have the yips um, when he when he uh, bowled in the um, fourth innings of the last test match that he played in. Um, so that would mean options of going to Mason Crane, uh, going to Matt Parkinson or Amir Verdi. Um, do you see a path for any of those guys coming into the test match for the fourth test? I, I can't see it, to be honest. Um, purely for the point of uh, balance for the side, we've just picked... Gary Balance. Of- Gary- yeah, we have <laughs> Gary Balance back. Uh, we've, just, we've, we've just picked a bunch of bowlers, uh, <laughs> a nice four four man tail, and that didn't go so well. Um, and then you know, in, in, so we kind of we're kind of stuck really with you got we have to play another spinner, and you got to bring Don Best back and try and get his head in the right place after having uh, jettisoned him, discarded him like yesterday's old newspaper. Cause Matt, Matt Parkinson's got a first class batting average of five. So he's not the man for the job. Amir Verdi's batting is about as good, and I think his fielding might be about as good as well. So, yeah, for and for, for me, it's. Um, I think they probably they probably still believe that Don Best can uh, can be England's Test spinner, and he offers that um, you know the the right arm left arm option alongside Leach. So I think it's got to be Best. Yeah, I think that's the sad realization that they'll probably come to. I mean, there's another, there is another point of view to take on all of this. I would say, um, Ross, you're a man of the art world, aren't you? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, yeah. So you'll know that that in the in the history of art, some of the greatest pieces uh, have been created out of hardship and difficulty. Uh, Picasso's Guernica, obviously coming after the bombing of Guernica. Uh, Van, Van Gogh's magnum opus, Starry Night, um, it came in the aftermath of his breakdown and self-mutilation when he was in an asylum. Um, now I'm sitting here and I'm wondering, after the last couple of tests, tests where Eng- England have, you know, they've been mauled, they've they've gone to a dark, dark place. Whether there is there is an artistic genius, a maverick genius out there, <laughs> who who's possibly brewing up a masterpiece himself. Now, I'm going to cut the metaphor a little bit. And I'm just going to ask you straight up, Ross. Um, could Ed Smith be freaky here? Because you're asking the questions. You're trying to get us to speculate on it. What do you think he could do? Uh, I, I, think, I, think he's, I, I think he could tear it all up, couldn't he? He could tear it completely up. This, this, could, be, this could be the Ed Smith kind of renaissance, if you will, of the England side. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I would love, love it to... Uh, it's going to be a red ball. It's going to be a turning pitch. Why don't we try and match India? Why don't we try and go for the three spin option? We know. <laughs> why, why, why don't we do it? Why don't we get, have Leach in the side? Why don't we have Bess in the side? Oh, if, you, and if not Bess, Root's going to have to bowl for you, but bring in Parkinson. I think now is the time for a crane or a Parkinson. A leg spinner is exactly what should be on the menu if I'm Ed Smith. So who drops out then? Stuart I go Broad. Stuart Broad. Yeah, Stuart Broad goes... Stuart Broad, Archer, or Anderson? Yeah, uh, I, I, two of them. I, I, if I were in charge, if I were in charge, I would, I would have the top three we talked about a while ago. I'd probably keep Bairstow in for just one more test and give Pope a little rest. Uh, that would be my top six sorted out. I might move folks above Bairstow because he actually looks like he's got a clue. Um, <laughs> then down the order, yeah, I, I, I would be really tempted because from England's point of view, in the World Test Championship cycle, this is a free hit. Like mm-hmm. there's. There's, they cannot make the final. All they can do is send Australia to the final. There's no good outcome from England's point of view here. India or Australia are going. 
Uh, they're going to if they if they win, they send Australia to the final. If they lose, oh well, they won a test. You know, they got more than anyone expected out of this series. Well, inside the series, yeah, yeah. You might well no, I mean it in the oh. in the if yeah, in the in, if and if they win, yeah, then they've they've tied the series in India. They probably won't do that ever again. Um, <laughs> Like, you might as well, I, I say, yeah, let someone loose. Because it's not, let's be honest, India, if they've got half a brain, which it appears they do, they're just going to roll out something that spins quite a lot in this in this last test. And England are going to go down again, looking really, really bad. So, you know, throw in the mystery spinner, hope mm-hmm. for the best. <laughs> Archer, is lone seamer. Archer is a lone seamer with Stokes, or Anderson is a lone seamer for the reverse swing. Archer bowling left arm spin, mate. <laughs> 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 I uh, I actually think they'll probably drop uh, Archer. I don't think he'll play. I think in terms, yeah. of, I think I think they're going to value the one day series and the T Twenty series quite highly after yeah. after being embarrassed here. So I can see him being dropped out. I thought Ollie Stone did well. Mark Wood has been added to the squad. He's come back now, so there's options there. Um, but I would really really like them to see. A, a new spinner i just think it would be such a, a it would be a positive step in what has been a relatively negative couple of test matches i always like yeah. to see a leg spinner i would i would Agreed. be well up for that uh, okay right. india india yeah. yes so india so um india obviously you, you don't really change a winning side normally um but in typical indian twitter um and in indian media there has been a couple of questions raised around um ajinka rahane's position in the side um, yeah, recently he had a really bad, uh, did a really bad job captaining the side, didn't he, uh, overseas in really troubling conditions? Yeah, there is, there is a bit of a bit of short termism when it comes to this, and a bit of rage, which I think just isn't really justified. Yes, he's only averaged nineteen uh, in to uh, twenty twenty one, which isn't great for your number five. Um, however, you he is got to give the... everyone a chance. Yeah, <laughs> no, that isn't what you were going to say. I thought that was what you were going to say. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're not we're not quite finishing each other's sentences yet jack um but without rahana i think that indian squad actually lacks that leadership capability i don't think Kohli is a great leader when it comes to cricket that, that he has got a good record but he's got some great lieutenants around him and i think that you need the yin and the yang max that you talked about a couple of shows ago and i think rahane is that to Kohli. I think everyone knows about the kind of relationship, whether it's good or bad, it's up to you to decide between Rohit Sharma and Kohli and that kind of power struggle between two kind of behemoths of the of the modern game. Um, whilst the likes of Ashwin and Pajara, they are they are focused on being the best cricketer they can be in their role in that test team. They are not focused on leading that team. So I don't think that they can actually justify dropping Rahane, especially, Max, as you say, after the Australian kind of heroics that came out of his brain. Um, but also, they'd, I think they would lack a real leader. What do you think? I'll probably agree with that. I don't, I don't see why they would, mm-hmm. really. Um, I, I, like, I, I think just from the point of view of not changing a winning team, um, I, I think you should keep him. What's the alternative? I mean, have you got a, 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 some options that you can tempt me with? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you're not going to pick Vahari. Oh, he's a bit boring when it comes to... Is, 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 not. No, and, and, Agarwal. People yeah. have occasionally said that he could come in and maybe bat six or maybe send someone down the order. But I just don't I, think I, you I don't replace... Think you need, yeah, I just don't think I don't, you need to. The, yeah, the issue, I, I don't really see it. Um, yeah. What were you going to say? Well, so the issue that is, is, is in play is that Bumrah has been um, sent home. He's got, I think, his personal issues that he needs to deal with. Don't know what it is, so wish him all the best. Um, but he's going to be replaced by either Siraj or Umesh Yadav in, into the side. Um, but if I'm a selector um, for India in this scenario, I'm gearing the side up with another batsman. So Washington didn't really do anything, did he, in the last test match and because it, because it didn't run too, too often. Um, but is Washington Sundar actually a better batsman than Agarwal? Probably not. Um, they've shown that with Axar and Ashwin, they've already got spin covered. Um, Ishan and Umesh or Siraj, who comes in, can bowl the rest. So that's fine. Um, India's position now is that they can either draw the match or win the match and they're into the final. All they need to do is avoid losing. I don't think England will be able to bowl out all of their batsmen twice if they pick another batsman. And I think they probably still have the bowling to take 20 of English wickets. Yeah, I don't. I I don't know why they do that though. I mean, I, I I think I think they can beat England with the team that they had mm-hmm. swapping around Bumrah. I don't think they ever need they need to overthink this. No. Um, I, I mean, they mean, might. They didn't have Bumrah in the second test. That didn't really matter much, did it? 
<laughs> no, exactly. I, so, I, I mean, like, I, if I were an India fan right now, I'd feel pretty good about myself. Um, mm. If I were an Indian cricketer, I'd, bro, I'd be feeling even better and a lot richer about myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but I, 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 I'm looking at this. I mean, I, I can't logically see why you would would swap any of those players from the second test um, for for this one. Mm-hmm. England, I mean, I, England looked shot. Why, yeah, I mean, why I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the same page as you, mate. But we do a cricket podcast where we're trying to okay. offer a different bit of an opinion and bringing in Agarwal as a uh, well, we're going to play eight batsmen. This is what the approach we're going. I'd go for that. I mean, they could do that if they really wanted to draw it. Why not just play eleven batsmen? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've never seen, seen Ro- anyone do it yet, have we? Yeah, and we we've seen, seen anyone Sharma. play eleven batters. Yeah, we've seen yeah. Rohit Sharma's pies, haven't we? Anyway, so I think um, what we're going to end up with is a strong India side. Uh, England should shuffle the deck. Um, so let's have a couple of predictions. Max, um, final test is two one in the series. Are England going to claw it back, or is it going to be three one India? Uh, three three one India for me. I'm afraid. I think we'll put up a bit be- a bit better fight this time round. At least I certainly certainly hope we do. But I can't see anything other than India taking it three one. Okay, Jack. I think probably India. Um, I think to be honest, we have to acknowledge that there is the wild card draw in here. Um, we've we've sort of said, or Ross, you just said uh, like a minute ago, that India only need a draw to get to the World Test Championship final. Uh, we've seen in the last two tests that they uh, are happy to be a little bit creative with uh, their curation of the wickets. Um, so would it stun you if this turned out to be like a, a 600 plays 500 type surface? Uh, they're probably under a little bit of pressure. Uh, on the on the old pitch front after the last two as well, um, so I, I think there's the possibility that they that that they they put out a real flatty. Um, probably though, they just put out something that spins again because they're India and uh, they know they'll win if they do that. <laughs> uh, and and um, in it a was- way, in a way, putting out a, a, a wicket that spins loads against this England England side is is less of a risk, isn't it? Mm. Than um, producing a wicket that looks like it will be it will create a draw um but might lead to a joe root double century yeah and, and a matt parkinson tenfer <laughs> uh, anyway, uh i think that uh i'm gonna go with the england win i'm gonna go that uh england pull it out of the bag no one's expecting it when no one was expecting them to win the first test so uh two two in the end for me um what are you should take a really quick break really quick break and then we'll come back with just the odds and sods the bits that we haven't talked about yet So to kick off the final third of the show, uh, let's talk some women's cricket. Um, the England women's team uh, are in action in New Zealand. Uh, they won two of their three ODIs against New Zealand uh, women to take that series 2-1, uh, being derailed in the final match by a super century from New Zealand's Satterthwaite. Besides the brutal time difference, um, which is you know, one of our favourite topics on the show, uh, and, but actually because we, we like it so much, it's something we've had to um, permanently ban from discussion. <laughs> um, the main talking point is probably uh, that this is the first women's 50 over match uh, played by the England team for 15 months. Not an ideal set of circumstances, Ross. Uh, no, um, I think it's always been quite challenging between kind of uh, female and men's sports. Um, I think the inequality between the two setups was kind of well known, um, but in cricket there was some positive strides um, to a more equal footing uh, with some people getting uh, proper contracts, etc. Um, however, the pandemic has put pause or pressed pause on that kind of momentum that was being built up. Um, the difference is stark, and there's no doubt that sports women have been let down. I think uh, it's probably fair to say, um, especially the cricketing sphere, um, and that goes from not only the lack of games, as you mentioned, Jack, but also kind of access to equipment, um, as well as even the, the chance to be in a bio bubble um, around India. There, there wasn't seemingly that proactive nature. Um, the Women's World Cup was pushed back not one year but two years um, around this, so um, it's been a bit of a tough time. Um, I think. It also comes down to some of the financial support that is provided or um, in a lot of the cases not provided due to those contracts that are in place. So a lot of people are paid on kind of training camps and match fees rather than some of the contracts that are in place. So um, 
this isn't a problem just in international cricket uh, or just cricket in general. Um, and there are a couple of good articles that you can read on Red Brick by Sophie Utteridge and uh, on The Conversation by Ali Bowles, um, which are definitely worth reading in this space. Yeah. Uh, Matt, on, on the topic of the actual cricket, uh, who impressed you? Or did you manage to catch any of it? Because it was on in the middle of the night. We should acknowledge we're probably, uh, well, I, I certainly wasn't up at three in the morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 despite um, despite England very uh, magnanimously getting their test matches out of the way in time for everyone to yes. to watch <laughs> the one days, um, I I mean I, for me it's got to be the the player of the series, isn't it? Uh, Tammy Tammy Beaumont scores uh, 70, 71, 72 and eighty eight in the three games and was only out once, so um, quite deserving of a of a player of the. The series award, excellent, really set up England's um, England's two chases really nicely and basically only didn't score more in the third innings because she ran out of uh, people to bat with. So, um, uh, yeah, excellent performance from, from her. Uh, but I think also probably fair to give New Zealand a mention for roaring back in style, as you mentioned in that third OGI, after being soundly beaten in those first two. And uh, they ended a run of 11 ODIs without a win in, in doing that. So, um that was uh, that was a nice a nice moment for them who who you know clear, they're clearly not a terrible team so eleven games without a win was uh, doing them a disservice. Mm-hmm. Are they um, in women's cricket? I don't I don't know. Uh, so the narrative in the men's game is they're the good, they're the good boys, they're the the nice guys. Are they the good girls, the nice girls in the in the in the women's game, Max? I, I can only assume so. Probably it's just they're just a nice nation. Kiwis aren't they? just they're just um, lovely, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I did catch one of the beginnings of one of, or the, I caught the beginning of one of the matches. I was quite impressed by Catherine Brunt, uh, who's basically bowling loads of bouncers, which is um, always good. <laughs> she was also, she was rested for the final ODI, which England lost. Uh, and that's always a good thing from a personal point of view, isn't it? To, to, to miss out when the team loses, because <laughs> then uh, people start talking about you being the it's that, that absence bias again exactly mm-hmm. um the <laughs> there was another funny thing related to this game uh alex hartley has anyone got the tweet up in front of them or can they paraphrase it uh i think i can uh, i think i've got it here so um yeah, it was uh, after England lost. Um, <laughs> it's hardly England off. men's team. Yeah, an England men's team. Rory Burns dropped for the side, was feeling obviously a bit sorry for himself and decided, <laughs> Do you know what? The women have had it so good and men have had it so badly over the last few years in cricket <laughs> and in life in general. Um, he, he said... Uh, <laughs> He he responded to uh, Hartley's tweet. Hartley said, uh, nice of the England boys to get this test match finished just before England women play tonight with some uh, clapping emojis afterwards. So a bit tongue in cheek. And uh, Rory Burns took a particular offence. And um, Jimmy Anderson and Ben Stokes both liked this, by the way. Uh, but Burns came back with a very disappointing attitude considering all the boys do to support the women's game. Max, you're, you're a big Surrey fan. <laughs> Was this a bit of a misstep from old Rory? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid it was. I think uh, maybe he might have a little too thin a skin on this one because, from from my point of view, there is um, it's it's just a, it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? And you have to consider that uh, Alex Hartley is. I mean, at the moment, uh, her her main role is a broadcaster. You know, working for the BBC and BT, and you know she was plugging some of the BT uh, coverage. So you can, from that point of view, it, it's clearly just intended as a joke. It's like, ah, oh, well, now now we we can focus on on the the women game against New Zealand now England have got the test team out of the way yeah just have, have a bit of fun and uh, Rory Burns has um, has not covered himself in glory I'm sure it was just uh, I'm sure he I'm sure he regrets it but it's just one of those things where it's like it's a bit he's obviously taken it the wrong way it's a bit a bit silly but on something like Twitter like rightly or wrongly you have to think a little bit more about what your uh, reactions are gonna um, are gonna gonna result in because Twitter is uh, unfortunately at times a very toxic place and if you give people the opportunity to pile on uh, they will gladly grab it with both hands and, and throw as much abuse as they they can which supports whatever agenda they have so I, I think you have to be a little more aware of your surroundings with those sort of things like as a as a comment on its own it's it's you know it's it's like it's a bit a bit childish but i think it's sort of the fact that what's what's uh what's um continued afterwards from from other people you need to be a little bit more thoughtful yeah um i i think that's just i think that's just one from max i think that's just one big thing to try to get the internet to stop saying he looks like ed sheeran rather than (laughs) anything else uh i yeah max 
Mm. Uh, what <laughs> I liked about Rory Burns, uh, or like, I thought was funny, was that he hadn't tweeted since like August last year. Obviously, <laughs> this, it like, off. He probably this had is to, the issue. He actually probably had to go through the whole uh, password reset process to, uh, yeah, to yeah. be able to get into Twitter except, to make the except some new terms and conditions. <laughs> 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 I just stick to haircuts. Um, right. Uh, also in New Zealand, the Aussie men have been mm-hmm. taking on the Kiwi men uh, and not doing such a great job of it, Ross. No. So there's a five match T20 series going on at the moment and uh, New Zealand are currently 2-0 up. Um, due to the snap lockdown because of a coronavirus case in Auckland, uh, the two games will now be played at Wellington behind closed doors, uh, which is a shame because when I was watching the highlights, it was great to see all of the crowd kind of at the, at the cricket ground. So they were played at the University Oval um, in Dunedin. I think I'm saying that correctly. Um and it was just, it was just, it was just great to see. Really, um, the second T Twenty was a really close contest. Uh, Martin Guptill is back. Is the big news? Uh, he took over Rohit Sharma as the man with the most T Twenty international sixes. Uh, Owen Morgan is third. Yeah, if you're wondering, um, he did it at this ground to so the University Oval. There were some boundaries that were less than sixty meters uh, long. So, Charger. Yeah, it was. I mean, if, if there was a place to play an international 2020, this is the one if you want a, a gluttony of runs. And uh, it didn't really disappoint. Um, Kane Williamson was good. It was unsurprising to anybody. Um, and only one of the Australian bowlers went for under 10 and over. And that was Jai Richardson, a uh, new millionaire, um, who went at 9.75. Um, <laughs> Still under 10, though, isn't it? Sure is. Uh, Jimmy done. Lee... Jimmy Nisha was the star of the show, hitting 45 not out off of 16 balls, including uh, three sixes off the first three balls of his innings. So he was in a, he was in fine form um, and then was entrusted with the final over of the innings where he got Daniel Sams, who was uh, had a bit of the Nisha juice, who was on 41 off of 15 balls, and our podcast favourite, Marcus Stoinis, um, and saw New Zealand home to a four run victory. So uh, it was great. If you want to watch the highlights, it's on um, the BT app and uh, I can highly recommend it. Um, the biggest highlight for me was where Glenn Maxwell took a catch um, and dismissed Santa and then turned around to the crowd and literally was just like, come on. Mm. And he'd uh, start giving, giving it back to the crowd. So, uh, which was great to see. I, uh, I, the, the one thing that I was sort of interested in that series is the, the, the performance of the new, very expensive Carl, Carl Jameson, Chris Morris replacement. And, um, he went, he's been, uh, well, carted around for 88 runs off seven overs, picking up one wicket so far. So, uh, hopefully he can turn that form around by the time he, uh, <laughs> lands it's not in good, is it? it's <laughs> That's such an RCB move, isn't it? Yeah, picking a guy who so got Coley out a couple of times a year ago. <laughs> so, so, the, so the funny thing was, so Matt Wade, and he's what five foot two, five foot three, Matt Wade, and he was just bowling back of a leg to him, and Wade was just knocking it over the keeper for six. <laughs> it was it was a completely new way of playing Jameson. So it was uh, it was really fun. Yeah. Um, should we wrap up with a little bit of PSL then, Max? Yeah. So uh, the the PSL is very much underway. We're uh, we're eleven games in now, and um, the. 11 games have all been won by the chasing team, which is uh, a nice a nice little stat. Um, Peshawar Zalmi and the Lahore Calendars are leading the table so far, both on three They've wins. They've won the most tosses then, basically. Yeah, three <laughs> wins and one defeat each. Um, it's been, I don't know how much of it you, you guys have watched, but it, is, it seems to have been, from my point of view, pretty... Uh, pretty high high quality stuff so far some of the top performers um like Mohammed Rizwan Shahjul Khan uh, Fakar and uh, and Babar have all been amongst the runs and um a, a few other notable names on in the batting front are uh, Chris Gale Alex Hales James Vince Faf all uh, all over there and all all um, all in the runs and then from the bowling front Saqib Mahmood is uh, leading the wickets table with 10 from Shaheen Afridi and Wahab Riaz and uh, I mean, f- for me all all obviously it's very difficult for political reasons and I, we won't get into uh, Indo-Pakistani relations because it's not a good idea but I think we should <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I really do hope that um, in the near future we can see some of these guys in the IPL because they're, they're, the the quality is there. They are they are high high class players and they would only improve. I think the 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 IPL by seeing some of these. I I, I absolutely love Shaheen Afridi. I think it's brilliant. I think he's a, an absolutely cracking player. And obviously people know how good uh, Babar Azam is. And um, 
Yeah, he, I, he, I just, he likes to bowl a Yorker. That's what yeah. I like to see. As a left armer, like Stark has a great Yorker. Shaheen Afridi has a really good Yorker as well. And it's just yeah. amazing to see someone actually deliver it with such a plomb. And if he got the opportunity to play in the IPL, he probably wouldn't cry off before the auction every time. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I, 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 it's interesting, the, the, the PSL, because there's a batting second in t20s is an advantage i think you win about 55 60 percent of the games so there is no, 100 mate well i was going to carry <laughs> on to that there, it's more it's the most distinct advantage you get in cricket so in test cricket and i don't know well the other formats you can work that out at home um it's not such an advantage to bat second but it is a it is a big one in in t20s and even more pronounced in the PSL. I think it's something like 80% of games last year and the year before were also won by the team batting second. Um, I wonder what they'll do to figure that out. Maybe that can feature as our, our question of the week sometime <laughs> soon. But it does. It probably does need a little bit of a rebalance yeah. there. I mean, what, um, is, it, I, is it the due factor? I mean, what? I suspect, well, it could be that. I suspect it's probably a little bit to do with the quality of spinners as well um like a lot of the a lot of the best bowlers are fast bowlers mm. and I, I wonder if that makes it just a little bit maybe it's the due mate but maybe it's just it's a little bit hard to control the run rate um when you are bowling second in a way that um isn't the case in well, uh... in, in other matches and and also you you maybe there's just like less of a wicket taking threat in the middle overs because everyone's just bowling sort of 130 kilometers an hour instead of mm. doing anything with the ball mm-hmm. so no interesting um i did catch a little bit i've got quite a few quite a little quite a lot of it actually um but uh my the best bit of the tournament i think we, we could probably agree or i don't, I don't know if you'd agree was uh afridi shaheen afridi bowling to baba azam uh did you see that uh, i saw him get him out and put his arm around him it didn't last very long did it no yeah <laughs> shaheen afridi yorked him um off stump out the ground uh Middle stump sort of drunkenly leaning backwards. Uh, bye bye, Baba. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Mohammed Amir, everyone's um, favourite uh, no ball specialist, uh, also went round the park and lost his team the game, didn't he, yesterday? He did, yeah. So that, that it looked like the, the teams batting second were going to finally pick up a victory. Uh, they needed uh, the T, I can't remember who it was, uh, Ben Dunk was batting. Uh, they needed 30 something off the last two overs uh and um amir went for like 22 <laughs> <laughs> david visa was hitting sixes miles i think he hit his first three balls for six or something like that yeah there's a few uh there's a a, a few um t20 blast veterans uh around in in that uh in you the, got a bit in of the samit patel yeah yeah anyways uh well alex Hales, of course um yeah. shall we say goodbye to everyone Yes, uh, everyone. If you uh, if you want to subscribe, you should definitely do subscribe. So use this button down here. That's a great offer. You, Ross. you just pointed yeah. at Jack there. Did I? Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Just this one, you, Max. Uh, and also, if you've got ideas around uh, or theories why the PSL um, and the second team um, batting second always wins, let us know. We'll try and solve some conundrums next week. Yeah, good idea. Um, yeah, what Ross said: like, subscribe. Goodbye. You're listening to the Cricket Podcast.